Hi there everyone, welcome back to English with Catherine, me. Today I've got a really nice video for you. So I've made another list of 10 words that I love to show you and they are a mix of different types of words. There's a herb, there's a colour, there's a semi-precious stone, there's even a mythical sea creature. Some of these are really advanced words and some of them, I have to be honest, I just love them. I think I've told you before that I'm a musical person, I play the piano and I sing, so I love the sound of words. So this is really something from me to you, it's about my personal taste in words and maybe you agree because they are pretty lovely. I hope you're excited, so let's get started with the words. Number one, mermaid, mermaid, mermaid. A mermaid is a creature who lives in the sea, so the torso is a woman and the tail is a fish. I just love this word, maybe because of what it means and the imagery that comes to my head about this creature that lives in the sea, this beautiful woman that just is on a rock, just flapping around beautifully in the sunshine. <laughs> mermaid, mermaid. It's just lovely. I probably like it as well because my favourite Disney film when I was younger was The Little Mermaid. I'm sure you've seen it. And I love the music, the characters, everything about the film is just amazing. Pronunciation tip. Stress the first syllable. Mermaid. Mermaid. And because the syllable is stressed, we don't need a schwa. We're just going to have a really strong er uh sound. No R. Okay? So, mermaid mermaid. Number two, incandescent, incandescent, incandescent. Now I did say that some of these words are advanced and this is one of them. This word is so beautiful but not everyone will know what it means. So literally speaking when something is incandescent it just means glowing or bright because it's been heated light bulbs are incandescent but these days we also use incandescent to describe a person with strong emotions okay so slightly like the meaning of being heated and glowing the person is being heated and glowing with their strong emotions so you can be incandescent with passion and love for something or someone or you can be incandescent with rage so any strong emotion you can use incandescent. For example, she felt an incandescent love for life. It's a beautiful word, incandescent. Pronunciation tip, make sure to stress des, okay? So the third syllable, incandescent, incandescent. And of course the C is silent. Number three is garnet, garnet, garnet. It is the beautiful dark red semi-precious stone. Um, it just so happens to be my birthstone for January, that's where my birthday is, and so people have given me over the years um, birthday gifts of garnet jewellery, <gasps> amazing, and I have some really nice earrings and a necklace that have garnets and I wear them in the autumn or winter because they're quite a dark colour. The colour of garnets is like a wine red it's a really deep red colour, different to rubies which are more like a pinky red. I just love them, they're so warm and I just love the word garnet because it makes me think of those beautiful stones. Pronunciation tip, stress the first syllable, so gar, no R of course, gar, and then in the second syllable we need knit which is a short I, okay? Garnet, garnet. Number four, smitten smitten, smitten. What a lovely word, if you know what it means you will love it even more. So this means to be really happy and pleased with something. So you could say as a really funny stupid sentence, <laughs> I am really smitten with my kitten. I am so smitten with my new kitten. <laughs> That's probably a tongue twister as well so try to say that quickly. <laughs> So it means you really, really love the kitten, you know, you love the kitten, it's amazing, it's cute, it's furry, it's fluffy, it's got a cute face. But we can also use smitten to describe being strongly attracted to someone. 
So, for example, she was totally smitten with her new boyfriend. Synonyms for this word are captivated and infatuated. Pronunciation tip. We want a short I and stress the first syllable. Smitten. Smitten. There's a schwa in the second syllable. Number five. Scuttle. 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 This is such a cute word because it actually is describing the way a crab moves. You know how crabs, they go sideways? Well, the verb to describe how they move is to scuttle. So sea creatures usually scuttle, okay? So anything aquatic that has the little legs, they scuttle along the seabed. But we can use it to describe people if they are moving in an anxious, kind of jumpy way. Maybe they're late for something and they're scuttling through a crowd. You can use it for people in that way. Synonyms for this word are scamper, scurry and skitter. Pronunciation tip, really pronounce those T's, okay? We have a really strong T in the British accent, not in every word, but especially when there's a double T, okay? So scuttle, scuttle. Number six, indigo, indigo, indigo. What a beautiful colour this is. It's like a dark bluish purple and it's, it's got to be one of my favourite colours. Especially when you see indigo in a sunset, you know, when the sky turns purple in quite rare, stunning sunsets. Um, that colour is just so amazing. And what a lovely word, indigo. Pronunciation tip, if you want a British accent, make sure you make the alphabet O at the end I call it the alphabet O, and it just sounds like the letter O. So indigo, O, it has to be a round sound to sound like how it's supposed to sound. So indigo. Number seven, meadow, meadow, meadow. <gasps> One of my favorite words. So a meadow is a piece of low ground, usually near a river, and the ground is usually covered in wild flowers. So it's just one of the most beautiful places you can be. And the best dream I have ever had, hands down the best dream, was when I was about seven years old and I've never forgotten it. I was in an amazing meadow covered in dandelions, not the yellow dandelions, the dandelion clocks, okay? And every single seed on the clocks was a diamond. Can you imagine how that looked? So I was just walking through this meadow full of dandelion clocks that were made of diamonds. That's got to be some kind of heaven, right? Pronunciation tip for meadow. Stress the first syllable. So meadow, meadow. Number eight, bungalow. Bungalow, bungalow. This is just so fun to say, right? Bungalow, what a hilarious word. It's like, like a dinosaur or something. It sounds like some mythical prehistoric creature, but no, it's not. It's a house, a one-story house, not usually very big. You can get big bungalows, you can, but they're usually smaller and old people or elderly people, we call them, usually live in them because they're easy to get around. They don't have any stairs. And my grandparents have lived in the same bungalow for the last 20 years. And I have so many memories in this bungalow. So even the word I like probably more because of that. Pronunciation tip, this is actually a really difficult word to say because you're not going to say bungalow, bun. It's like, it's in the back of the throat, this ng sound. So it's bung, ng. It's really weird. I almost would have to show you in person to really get you to say it properly, but bungalow, bung. It's a true G in the middle, so you can really make that G sound, so bungalow. Number nine, blush, blush, blush. Isn't that lovely, blush? Do you know what it means? It's when someone feels embarrassed or shame and their cheeks turn pink or red. Sometimes their whole face can turn red. Depends how much shame and embarrassment they're feeling. And I also love this word because I remember when I was first starting to wear makeup and I used to steal my mum's makeup, her blue eyeshadow, and I looked hilarious. Um, I used to steal my sister's makeup too. 
sorry about that Victoria um <laughs> but yeah blusher was something I used to put on so this is makeup to make your cheeks look red I'm sure you know this we say blusher if you put too much blusher on you can look like a clown uh, which is basically how I looked for most of my teens it took me a while to get the hang of wearing makeup <laughs> pronunciation tip for this one it is a short u sound so ah uh, blush blush number 10 is lavender 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 i love this word because i love lavender i love the smell of it i love the color just everything to do with lavender so this is a lilac or purple colored herb and it is known to have relaxing qualities to it so people put lavender in their bath so that they can breathe in the aromas and relax in the bath but also it's a really nice shade of purple so so if you're painting your house and you want to find different shades of purple you might ask the shop assistant do you have any lavender paint and that is a particular shade of purple pronunciation tip stress the first syllable so lav lavender lavender and there's a schwa on the end of course because it ends in er so you're going to say lavender not lavender and that's all i've got for you today there will be more i do love other words many more are springing to my mind right now i hope you enjoyed the video um hit subscribe if you would like to you can also follow me on instagram i post about my life and also British English language tips and some stuff about culture. Post another of your favorite words in the comments below. I absolutely love reading them. And yeah, it's a bank holiday weekend here in the UK because it's the King's coronation, which I might talk about in another video. Anyway, that's for another time. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.